Good morning and welcome to the morning show. I'm Bo Henricks in for Phil Nee, and today we are going to be talking with River Valley District Administrator Lauren Glassbrenner. And while we are not into a new school year, we're into at least a new year. And it seems like in the second half is where we're going to be dealing with some bad weather. Good morning, Lauren. Thanks for joining me. Thank you, Bo. I'm glad to be here. Always glad to take the trip over from the River Valley School District. And um, yeah, it looks as if we're going to really have to discuss some uh, potential weather that's coming our way, um, depending on when this gets actually aired it looks like tuesday is going to be a pretty heavy weather day in southwestern wisconsin yes and it seems like that's just the beginning this week because it can't just be a little we go all the way in (laughs) that's correct so uh i've been studying it for the last basically week they've been sending us updates from the the national weather service to superintendents around the districts and they've really been working really hard on making sure we look at the path of this certain weather pattern that's coming our way it looked as if we were going to get just a couple of inches and the most of it was going to go kind of south and east, if you will, of Madison. But that's all kind of flown a little more northern than they thought. So, yeah, um, Richland County's on a storm watch, I believe, uh, for today or later on tonight that goes in effect. And then we expect that Iowa and Sauk and Dane will be added to that as it comes across the state for our morning commute. So, yeah, it's something that the superintendents this morning started talking about. There's an entire group that uh, within our chat, if you will, that has all the districts in Richland and Sauk and Iowa communicating about what we're going to do because we always want to make sure we're looking at what everybody else in our neighboring districts are doing, but also how do we keep those kids safe? Um, It's about our buses, but it's also about student drivers. We want to make sure that the student drivers are wise in their decisions, so we're trying to just keep everybody safe. Parents, kids, families, community, everybody safe if we get bad weather coming our way. You bring up a good point, too, because especially when you're dealing with a high school, you're not only dealing with the buses and the parents taking their kids to school, but the students themselves. And so it's one of those things that it just adds another thing to the pot that you got to kind of take into account. Absolutely. And again, I'm lucky. I, I'm in River Valley where it's a great big district over there. But I'm also unlucky because with that great big district some come some really treacherous roads. I think of Dane Hill Road. I think of there's some roads out on Knockriner Road. I think of there's a couple of um, one that always hits my brain is Butternut Road. They're steep. They're curvy. They're gravel. They're paved. And, and we have to really be conscious of kids coming from their driveways over those hills and getting to school safely. So it's a big district. We have land that goes way up by Sauk Prairie. We have land that goes way over by Riverdale and over by Barneveld. So the district in itself has to watch Iowa County, Sauk County, Dane County, and Richland County area. And sometimes that's really a different kind of picture at the different corners of our district. But there are kids in every corner. And we've got to make sure that those drivers and those buses can get to school safely and home. Um, When we get up in the morning, it might not look as if that's that much snow. But if if it snows heavily from 8 until three and adds an additional six inches of snowpack, it's going to be something to be reckoned with. So we want to be really careful in making sure we can get kids to school. But I also have to forecast, can I get those kids home safely? And and sometimes that's a big part of the decision too. So when it's going to hit, I think it's going to be really interesting. It should start snowing right around Richland County, I would say tonight in the evening, lightly. But as midnight hits us going into Tuesday, it's supposed to pick up pretty heavily and then continue All the way through the 24 hours of Tuesday, not ending until Wednesday. So it's going to be, a, I think, a significant snow event, and we got to be careful with it. So, yep, we're talking about snow days for sure. At this minute, I'm getting texts on my phone that are coming from district superintendents thinking about can we make the decision yet tonight so that we can give those families a heads up because that means there's child care that they need to take care of for Tuesday. So we're always making sure that we're giving those families the heads up as soon as we can. I kind of find it fascinating, too, that when we're talking about these school days, uh, being on the media side, I know that we're in constant communication with the schools as to put out the information. But really talking about how the schools and the counties within themselves are kind of bouncing things off through a group chat, that's kind of new to me as well. And so when you guys are talking, how often are you guys letting each other know? Is it pretty consistent even as the day goes on, the school day? 
absolutely. It, 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 once somebody makes the decision, I'll pick on, you know, Richland Center. If the Richland Center District, the Richland School District jumps in and says, hey, we know it's going to be bad on Tuesday. We cancel school. That often um, starts a domino effect of other people around there. So usually once one school district takes a look at it, other districts start to make those decisions as well. And if it's coming from a different direction, again, if the larger districts like a Sauk Prairie or even a Madison starts to call, then we know that's a big significant thing for a rural district to take note of too. So I would say that communication happens hourly. For now, um, it started actually last evening with all of us making sure we had current contact information for everybody. And then since this morning at about 5 a.m., superintendents have been going back and forth with texting. And it'll happen hourly until all those decisions are made, most likely this evening or tomorrow morning. And then we pause and see if people will make that call again for Wednesday. If it looks like the snow gets cleared and we go to school on Wednesday, then we're good for a couple hours. But they're talking about snow events happening even Friday evening again. So then we're going to have to have conversations again about Friday evening about maybe athletic events or activities for students that we have to be wary of for the weekend. So it's the continual process of looking at whether if there's any event in the area. So you mentioned that you're kind of talking between these districts, but like how big is this radius? Because you also said if you get word from, let's say, Madison, Mm -hmm. are you like, is it Madison part of the group or are you getting, is somebody keeping an eye on Madison? So there are people keeping an eye on Madison. Locally in my phone, I guess I would say, we look at the, I would call it the CESA 3 range or kind of southwestern Wisconsin has a group. And that would include the districts of Richland, Grant, Crawford, Sauk, kind of those groups go together with Iowa County too, I should include them. But as the storm goes off to the east, if you will, then it starts to incorporate Sauk Prairie. It starts to incorporate Lodi. It starts to incorporate communication that I would have with Wisconsin Heights. And that that leads right into Middleton Cross Plains and Madison. So we watch the larger districts more so um on TV, we have personal contacts with our neighbors within our districts, and then we're also watching, you know, that communication through email or texting with our with the southwestern corner. So it's it's quite a a network of communication that happens. I'm sure Jeff Wright over in Sauk Prairie and I will talk today. I'm sure that I'll be talking with Richland County and Richland Center today, as well as Riverdale, as well as Barneveld, as well as Dodgeville, as well as Reedsburg. Weston, Ithaca, we'll all be in conversations today. So to the general public, as we make these conversations or these decisions, I should say, a lot of that is through collaboration with other districts around us. That's really cool because, you know, growing up as a kid, you know, you're always excited about snow days, but it always is one of those things that you're like, well, I got to wait to see if this school, because when this school calls off, then Mm -hmm. these schools will call Mm -hmm. off. And now you kind of see how that happens because Mm -hmm. you guys are talking to each other. You're arranging saying, okay, no, we're making the call. We're going to be doing this. And then it shows the others as the storm is passing. Well, we're probably going to have to, if it's doing Mm -hmm. what it's doing there. Correct. chances are we're going to have to. Yep. We've been watching this storm actually come out of Colorado, Nebraska. It's coming across Iowa. So we've been kind of thinking that this was coming our way. So the local news stations out of Madison have been carrying this for about a week. And so as I see them start to think about, oh, it might be an alert day, when it does truly become an alert day for southwestern or south central Wisconsin, then we jump in and really have to take note of it ourselves. And then we start to communicate more locally. Wow. Well, then I guess, uh, you know, talking about uh, what we're going to be doing at school the next couple of days is kind of up in the air. So why don't we talk about something that you guys have been working on for quite some time, and that is the referendum. You guys have been doing this now for quite some time. I mean, over well over a year. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those things that seems to be progressing at a pretty good rate. I know when you last talked with Phil, probably back in November, Mm -hmm. you gave an update. Uh, How have things been going uh, since then? Yeah, I've been trying to give updates for the communities around us about the referendum in River Valley that's been coming our way. And this is different than the, the other referendum. We do have operational referendum that like a many of our rural school districts run an operational referenda, and that's just to pay the bills and to make sure that we're continuing with the operating um, offerings that we have. So in order to offer all the good things for kids, we ask our communities to give us dollars and cents to make sure that we can continue to provide the great things that we do. And River Valley's had operational referendum happening for the last six years. 
However, we also are jumping into another type of referendum, and that's the capital referenda. And within the state of Wisconsin, a capital referenda is around remodeling or building to make sure that the facilities are up to code and up to snuff, if you will, to make sure that everything that we're doing with the greater properties of River Valley are where they need to be, too. So back in October of actually... um, 2023. Actually, I'll go back even further. It was back in 2022. We started having these conversations in phase one of building an advisory task force. And it was really important that I, as I took over some leadership roles in River Valley now four years ago, if we were going to look at the architectural structures as well as the status of our district, I needed to involve the community. So we set forth and invited I would say around 100 people to come to a meeting and we called those the advisory task force members. And they have been incredibly crucial and important to our group. And those advisory task force folks have really helped us look forward to think about what did we want the district to have. And really what they set forth is they set forth some goals for success. If we were going to look at capital referendum ideas in River Valley, they wanted us to be really careful to stick to some goals. So that original group of about 75 people got together and set forth some bulleted ideas and I'd still like to review those with just our communities to make sure they understand this is a community referendum. This isn't a River Valley administrator referendum. It's very much about what we can do to offer the best things for the kids of River Valley. So some of the things that they said for success, we have to continue to think about safety and security, making sure that the, you know, the offices are secure, that we go through really good procedures to make sure that any visitors coming to the school are truly meant to be there. Um, we want to try Uh, foster trust amongst our communities. River Valley is unique. We have Lone Rock. We have Arena. We have Plain. We have Spring Green that make up our district. So that unique structure of our district means that we need to foster trust in all of those communities and not think of one more than the other. We want to engage all students. We want to make sure that we have welcoming environments. We want to make sure that we're also making learning spaces and library spaces and collaborative spaces. Um, We really want kids to know that collaboration is a big deal. Um, We want to make sure that we're managing debt and being really thoughtful of how we spend our money because we can't just spend willy-nilly. Technology was considered. Um, We even investigated daycare and childcare, before school care, after school care. But within all of these, we basically wanted to utilize the best resources that we had to leverage and keep everything moving forward to create an opportunity for us to discuss what comes next in River Valley. So within that, lots of those goals. I know that seems like a lot, but that got us all to talking. And that then led to a big survey that we sent out to our communities. And I've talked about the survey with Phil before, but basically the action of that survey in the end said, yes, go to referendum. Really think about a capital referendum and think about how we can update the buildings that we have. Um, This referendum does not tear down and build new. It takes existing structures and remodels them to make sure we're utilizing this space to the best of our ability. It also said to continue to consider maybe putting some safe and secure entrances on the existing buildings. Right now, in two of the three buildings that we have on the Spring Green campus, the offices are set back in the middle of a building, so all visitors have to go through classroom space or hallway space to get to registering. And so we'd really like to think about putting safe and secure entrances in the front of our buildings. Um, we also are taking a very close look at ADA compliance and making sure that all of our facilities meet code. Um, our buildings were built quite a bit ago. Um, Our earliest learning center was built in 92, but our elementary was built in 89. Our middle school was built in 1969 and hasn't had remodeling since. Our high school has a wing that was built in 1962. And some of that has been updated, but then we had an addition in 93 and 99. And when you think of something like ADA compliance to make sure that it has access for anybody, to make sure that the American Disabilities Act is enacted, um, There are buildings in River Valley that were built way before the legislation of 92. So we have to take a look at of that code, that maintenance and that ADA work that is really important in our updates. So if we're going to remodel, we've got to bring things up to code. And that was something that the advisory task force told us to do carefully. They also said, think about long range planning. So we did a, a a population study of where our graduating classes are going to be in about the next 25 years. And we're really plateauing and we're going to watch that and make sure that we're 
not making it too small, but also not making it too big. We're really going to do our best to get the best guesstimates out there. And while we're doing that, we're also going to look at the transportation. Um, if anybody's ever been to River Valley, the three o'clock mark has about, I don't know, 500 vehicles coming into a small space. It's an incredible um campus but it's very congested when we're using the transportation and our elementary school has quite the pickup line and and our buses because we're a vast district we have 24 bus routes so within that all those buses and all those cars have to get on campus and get off campus within about a half hour's time so that's a lot so we're looking at trying to improve the way that we do pick up and drop off at all our buildings and the last thing that they really wanted us to take to task was to vacate our early learning center we have a building that is 11 miles to the north up in Plain. It was the elementary school for our Plain Elementary. And as they consolidated earlier, I would I think it's about eight years ago now that we've closed the buildings in Lone Rock and over in Arena, we consolidated but kept the early learning center alive kind of up in Plain. And that's where our 4K and 5K kids sit. Um, but that's for a different four additional transportation routes, which I'd love to not have to pay for. And it also puts our littlest kids on the bus the longest. Some of our four-year-olds and five-year-olds continue to have a bus ride that goes more than an hour. And that's a long time for our littlest learners. So we're really thinking of a way to get that building vacated and bring everybody to the Spring Green campus, to bring them down to the River Valley campus so that we can further consolidate and do our best of utilizing the spaces that we have. So with those things in mind, we jumped into our ideas of how do we do that? So we moved ahead with our campaign. We've used this public advisory task force meeting all the way along. And through this process, we finally come to setting some questions for the River Valley School District. So those questions will be on an April 2nd ballot. And those are big questions for us. So those are things that we will have a building referendum coming out um, to be on our ballot again, April 2nd. And it has two questions. One of those questions will be to authorize spending in order to update and build, if you will, those construction needs um, for the three buildings to meet ADA compliance, to put on some safe and secure entrances, and to remodel some classroom spaces. That's question one. That's in the tune of $19.5 million. That's a lot of money. Um, I will say that that's under $20 million. And I knew in our survey that we sent out to our community, they said, really try to keep the spending under $20 million million dollars and I do feel like this is doing that um, when you look at what we kind of wish we could have in River Valley it could go somewhere around 60 to 75 million wow. building costs are incredible um, so we've really tried to pull back to what we really need to continue this process of schooling. So please understand, we've been very careful in what we've chosen to include in this project. It's not about the frills. It's about meeting compliance and trying to get up to speed. The second question, though, is an additional funding. And, and that second question is for $14.5 million, but that's to build a performing arts center. And so River Valley currently doesn't have a space for any kind of plays, musicals, or performance arts. And so we're looking at that being a separate question where people can make that choice. They can invest in question one or question two. Or, of course, I would love it if they invested in question one and question two. But I tried to really make sure that we were cognizant of the fact that we wanted to give families a choice. If if they felt like they needed to help improve schools but couldn't cut it and they thought that that was overspending, that they could say yes to one and not to question two. So, again... I think that both of them are valid questions that help build forward great things for River Valley. But I also want to make sure that people understood there are two questions there and the vote really is up to them. It's been the way you broke it down, you know, from the beginning to where we are now and all the planning. You have a committee that's, you know, setting hard goals for you yes, to sir. look at to Absolutely. get to this point. Yep. To break it down into two questions kind of amazes me a little bit how you're taking all of that yeah. and you're breaking it down into two and so much planning for each of those questions yeah. has gone into where we're at even today and we're not done yet correct correct so this basically by setting questions the river valley school board has said that they think of it as a priority to push river valley ahead those are great priorities but now we turn it over to the public and now the public gets to be involved if they haven't been paying attention which again some people get busy i understand that the advisory task force 
um, meetings, their structure, their minutes, their ideas have all been public noticed and they have all been posted on the River Valley website. So if you ever want to learn more about this, you can go to rvschools.org and look at one of the big bubbles on the bottom and it basically says facility study task force and they can click on there and they're going to see a plethora of ideas on how we've gotten to the point we are today. But our next steps now are to go into informational, you know, like this is what we're proposing. Now do you have questions? So my role will be to provide information to anybody that asks me questions. But it does get it toward this this idea of um, we want to take a look at our facilities and we want to move ahead. Um, It's been really deliberate. It's been a really deliberate process with the right people at the table to make sure that the community knows we're not taking this lightly. This isn't about, again, just a few people thinking these are the great new things that we need in RV. These are about the things that all children need in River Valley to make sure that we're sustainable for the next 25 years. I have talked to Phil about this many times too, Bo, but like schooling today looks very different than it did even when I was in school in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, I teased, you know, I was excited when we got the first electric typewriters. Those were cool, right? It wasn't manual. And then from typewriters, we very quickly went into computers, but those computers were used in one spot. And even when I went to college at La Crosse, they were in a basement of one building. Now computers are in the hands of every child. Our kindergartners are learning how to use iPads and how to manipulate and look at learning tasks on iPads. By grade three in River Valley, every kid has access to their own personal Chromebook. So every kid has a Chromebook. Everybody can utilize technology, and it's an incredible tool. But again, think these classrooms were built back in 69 in some of the buildings, and now everybody has a Chromebook. There are classrooms that were built that only have two plugins. But now every kid's got their own machine. So there's just some, I guess I would say, things that don't match up. Old, older buildings and now new technology. And we've got to get those things to marry so that we can continue to progress and um, give kids all the opportunities that they need to go back out into the workforce for tomorrow. When you're doing all these add-ons to a school, and like you say, some parts are older than others. Yes, sir. That still means that there's nothing wrong with using some of the things that were really well built back in the day. But equally, it needs TLC. Amen. Amen. So what we did is we looked a lot at every square inch, every square foot of River Valley, and we're utilizing the outside walls and the inside walls as most we can. But we're thinking about how to use that outer shell and then to remodel within. Because if you use the existing shape and the footprint, if you will, of the building, you save a lot of money. Building new is where you get an incredible cost. So even adding on a space is hard for a district because that that takes an additional footprint. But if I use the footprint that's already there in the architecture, I can save a lot of money. And that's what we've utilized in our design process. So at some public meetings coming up, there's one in February, there's some in March. We're going to be hitting heavy this information so that our public can come see and view the design process as we've set forward so they know we're utilizing the space that we have better. Um, You know, there's some spaces that were designed for things of old. Um, I have a wood shop over at the middle school currently that hasn't had new equipment since the early 70s. There's a lot of technology changes even in wood shop and engineering since then. Now, we've added on pieces, but still the course structure of some of those courses has to be updated, and we need to do that. Um, We are very fortunate in River Valley. We offer some incredible elective experiences for our kids, but with those incredible experiences comes a lot of equipment and infrastructure to build in the wiring, to build in the electrical, to build in all the fire safety to make sure that it's up to code. So that's a lot of the work that needs to be done. Um, Yeah, we want to make sure that people know that we're using this opportunity to think about the future, but also not going with, okay, get rid of it all, build new. We don't want to build new. We want to update. We want to make sure that every kid still sees it as their middle school or their high school or their elementary, but that we're taking the existing platform or footprint and making it new. It captures by taking, let's say, just even one room and adding on to that, Mm -hmm. you still have that original feel and it does influence everything that's added on to it. And so in some ways, as long as you sometimes can keep the core of Mm -hmm. something it will still be that product just added on if done right. 
Yeah. In a lot of the urban schools and suburban areas, they're really trying to capture land because they get choked out by all the neighbors around you. River Valley's very fortunate. We have a nice plot of land in Spring Green. So we have space there to utilize around us. And so we're taking the existing structures. And as I said before, we're putting in new driving lanes to make sure entrance and exits from our families and buses goes faster. Right. We're going to try to utilize all the space that we have, use the footprint that we have. But try to use it better. So again, it's truly a remodel, a slight or a heavy remodel in some spaces, but we're going to remodel rather than build new. So what we're saying is at this point, you kind of gave that, they gave you a number yep. and you looked at it and you said, okay, we're going to do what we can to get within there. And and it sounds like you have, Yep. Um, all this planning has happened and you guys have, it hasn't really stalled. You guys are moving at a consistent pace. Absolutely. I think you guys are even slightly you know, above where you would originally mm-hmm. plan to be at this time. Now comes the point where you've done all the talking within your group, you've done all your planning, you've tried to reach all your goals, and now, like you said, you're going to answer questions. You have the idea, you have everything that you know, and now it's just about time to share that knowledge with the community so when the time comes and it's time to vote, they're all educated enough to make the best decision that they feel is appropriate. Absolutely, Bo. That that sums it up really well. And so my offer to any civic group that's out there or even a coffee clutch that wants me to come and sit and talk about this, my job now is to communicate before April 2nd when they go to vote any question or any answer to their question so that they feel educated in our process as well. I know not everybody can come to every meeting. I understand that. It's a busy time. But I do want them to know that I am available. I am willing and able to come out to their groups and sit and talk with them to make sure they understand why we've gotten to what we've gotten to. And that they understand, yeah, I would have loved to spend $75 million, but I also don't want to price people out of their homes. That's not reasonable. So we've tried to do it reasonably. We've tried to do it really carefully to make sure that we can can sustain, but that we've done it deliberately and intentionally within our means. And so, again, if I can come to any civic group or any kind of group that wants me to come, please just give the district office in River Valley a call and I'll be more than happy to come out and explain the process to them and clarify as um, as we go forward. I will be at any of the township or town board meetings coming up in the next three months. So I just started last week with the town of Spring Green. I went and sat with them. I explained our process. I brought the maps. I brought the plans. I will do that to any group that wants it so that they fully understand the process we've gone through in the last couple of years and so that they're knowledgeable about what will be on the ballot in April. So why don't we one more time let people know of these campaign yep. meetings yep. Um, so that, you know, you can plan if you, you know, and you should. If you're within that area, it does encompass all of these different towns. Yep. That is where you're trying to consolidate and build on. Mm-hmm. What are those dates again? You betcha. Our first one will be February 27th. That'll be at our high school at 5 p.m. Our second community meeting will be March 4th at our high school again. That's at 6 p.m. And then our third one will be at our middle school and that'll be at 5 p.m. And that's on March 21st. So again, February 27th in the evening, March 4th or March 21st in the evenings. They're all on the River Valley campus, but those are three community meetings where Everybody will be there. Again, I will though say, if you want me to come to a small group meeting, I'm more than happy to bring the River Valley Roadshow your way. And I'll be happy to sit with you at your kitchen table if you need me to, to help explain what we've done thus far and what we have on the ballot. And just reach out to the River Valley, you know, off district office. Absolutely. And just ask for you and you'll get in contact with them. You betcha, Bo. The big date again is uh, April, April 2nd. 2nd. April 2nd. So that will help us in the River Valley School District really take our facility study and give us direction of what we should do next. Excellent. Well, good luck and thank you for stopping by. Sounds like you have a lot on your plate and hopefully you have the chance to do that and we don't get snowed out. That sounds great. Sounds great. And stay tuned. Who knows what the snow is going to bring us tomorrow. Exactly. Thank you very much. That was River Valley District Administrator Lauren Glassbrenner here on The Morning Show.